Ladies and gents, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about Fractured Space. Now this is actually a game I covered on my channel a long time ago, about two years ago when it was initially released on Steam Early Access. And since then, a lot has changed. Now one of the first things I want to just get off my chest right off the bat is that this game is probably the best free-to-play game I have ever seen released. It has the most consumer-friendly marketplace business model that I have ever seen implemented into a free-to-play title. So what I mean by that is that everything in the game is completely balanced and fair. There is no pay-to-win aspect to this game at all. You can play this game completely free and earn everything in the game completely free. And there's no way that you can possibly pay for something that can somehow benefit you over other players. Everything is absolutely incredibly balanced. And one of the most impressive things I've noticed about this game, right off the bat, which amazed me, which I've covered many times. I feel like when I've talked about Blacklight Retribution in the past, I've mentioned that this is how it should be done. And it, it boggles my mind how this doesn't, like... How no game does this. But anyway, I want to just say this right now. Every single ship in the game. So basically, you buy ships, you earn credits. You can earn credits by playing the game. And those credits can buy you newer ships if you want. Or they can buy you side grades for those ships. Because each ship, some of them don't. But the vast majority of them have loadouts you can choose from. So that you can choose a different type of weapon or a different type of utility that you can utilize in the match. It's important to note that these are not upgrades. These aren't something that are going to just make you better. So if you spent money to buy these things, like you spent platinum credits that you purchased to buy these items, it's not going to change anything. It's not going to make you somehow superior because they are quite literally horizontal progression systems. In other words, it's a side grade. You're not getting an upgrade, you're getting a side grade. You're getting basically the same thing, performing in a different type of way to suit your playstyle better. That's it. But anyway, getting back on what I was trying to say about what boggled my mind, every single ship could be paid for with cash at a fair and decent price. Now, what I'm talking about is that you're not going to be spending hundreds of dollars to acquire every single ship like most free-to-play games out there would do. No, you pay a flat rate. A flat rate of like $40 to unlock every single ship in the game. That's a USD. In Canadian, it's like $43, not, it's basically $44 in Canadian cash monies. So what I'm trying to say is that this is a free-to-play game where you can just pay a full AAA price and get everything. Or you can play it for free and acquire everything for free. That's an absolutely incredible business model because I feel that every free-to-play game should be like that. Every single free-to-play game should be where if I want to, I can pay full retail price and get everything. Or I could play for free and buy things casually over time. So if we're going to compare this to say, like I was saying earlier, Blacklight Retribution, I spent $20 on that game. And that $20 only got me a single firearm kitted out the way I wanted. A single firearm. I got one rifle, all the attachments I wanted for it. That's it. And that cost me $20. That's not counting all the armor you can buy, that's not counting all the ad additional attachments, that's not counting, like, the friggin' dozens of other weapons, that's not counting all the grenades and, like, utilities and gadgets and everything you can use, which, if you were to buy all of that with money, would cost you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And I'm not exaggerating that, because most free-to-play games operate on that assumption that players are gonna just slowly put money in every now and again, and then suddenly they look at their friggin' bank statement, like, at the end of the year, and they realize they spent, like, $1,000 on this one game. And the developers are, you know, rolling around the cash monies, like, laughing maniacally, nude and stuff, and then you're sitting there, like, wanting to kill yourself because you just realize how much money you spent on a single free-to-play game. That's how their business models typically work. They try to gouge you every step of the way. You know, boosters, all kinds of nonsense like that. In this game, you can just buy the entire, all the content. You can just buy all the content, which is the ships themselves. What it will not buy you is the skins. And that's totally fine because this is a free-to-play game. So if you want to, and even then, it's only $40, right? If you were to pay $60 for this game, you could probably unlock all the ships, 
plus a significant amount of all the skins, or probably even all of them, I haven't done the math on it, and then you would have all the content in the game for $60 flat. Which would be incredible. That's how free-to-play games should be, but most of them aren't. And that's why I absolutely respect the developers of this game. They've done an outstanding job devising a business model that is fair to consumers. If you want to play the game for free, you absolutely can. You earn credits at a very good rate. You get drops all the time. For every two matches, you get a bronze drop. Every four, a silver drop. And every six, you get a gold drop. Point is, you play a certain amount of matches, you unlock crates. These crates give you all sorts of stuff. You can either get credits, you can get uh, new crew members, you can get DNA. It gives you whatever, it's random drops all the time. But the point is, you earn money at a relatively decent rate. It's not like you feel like you're grinding. And a lot of the starter ships you can buy for cheap for like 110,000 credits, which is really easy to earn, by the way, are exceptionally good. Like, I, right now you're seeing me fly the Brawler, which is easily one of the best ships in the game. Now, some people like to say it's gotten nerfed, but I mean, when I play with it, I'm absolutely devastating. So I'm not exactly sure what people are talking about. I feel like it's just right the way it is. If it was a little bit more powerful, then yeah, it would be hilariously overpowered in my mind. But currently, it, it's just, it's a very brutal ship to fly. This is one of the cheapest ones you can buy. You can buy it after playing a couple of matches. Like, it doesn't take much time at all to earn stuff in this game. It will take more time to earn the ships that cost like 616,000 credits. But still, you want to have longevity, you want to have something to work for, there you go. The point of the matter is, nothing is overpowered. You're not going to buy a $616,000 or credit like capital ship and somehow it's going to defeat everything because that's not how it works. Because that's, it's just the game is balanced. Every ship has their place, they all have their roles, which is phenomenal. Or you could just spend 40 bucks and get all the ships. And then if you want, you can spend more money and get all the skins. Like, it's entirely up to you. Most of the money that they're going to make comes from cosmetic skins. Comes from all those side additions to the game that kind of make you look different. That, I don't, they have boosters. You can earn credits. So you can, like, you can buy a booster where every time you finish a match, you can just increase the, you know, the amount of credits you earn. So there are boosters, but it doesn't impact gameplay directly. And that's critical when it comes to a free-to-play game. Because if you have a game where I can buy something that just makes me superior in the match I'm playing, then that's not exactly fair. That's completely pay to win. If I pay for something that makes my weapons do 10% more damage, come on, that's literally pay to win. And this game has none of that. It's just increased, like, the progress, your progression speed, you earn more credits so you can earn things faster, or you can just buy all the ships. Like, in my mind, I am thinking that... I want to buy, just buy all the ships, 40 bucks. I mean, that's completely reasonable. You're basically buying all the content in the game for it, like $40, which is totally reasonable. But at the same time, I've been earning things at a relatively respectable rate that I feel like I don't actually need to spend the money because I feel like in a decent time span, I will actually earn everything in the game. I'll kind of just push my way through it, grind, play, learn every ship along the way and buy what I want that I feel like I'll actually need and just progress slowly that way. Which is just great. Like, how many games could you say do that? Not many. Like, there are very, very little free-to-play games out there that do not gouge you every step of the way that make it obvious that people that put in money have an inherent advantage. In this game, you can spend all the money you want, you're not going to somehow be better than everybody. You won't. You can have the most expensive ship in the game and still get wrecked by the very first free ship you get in the game. Because you're given a ship to play with. You're given three, actually. You get a medium attack, another medium attack, and a medium defense. And you get those three ships, the Pioneer, the Sentinel, and the Venturer. Those are the ships you start off with. And they are quite capable on their own. I've gotten spanked by the Pioneer many times. I've gotten spanked by the Sentinel many times. The Venturer, yes and no, depending on the ship you're flying. Because, again, everything is classified by what kind of ship it is. You play it to your advantage. You play it to your play style. And you take that... It's all about strategy and teamwork, basically. It doesn't matter which ship you have. If you know how to play with it, if you know how to utilize it best for the team, and your team knows how to utilize their ships, you're going to come out on top every single time. Even if the entire other team is kitted out with all the most expensive ships in the game, it doesn't mean they're just somehow better. They're just higher priced. Because, you know, lore and market value and whatever. That's all it is. 
It's really just that simple. So again, one of the most well-balanced games I've ever played. I know I wanted to say that's how I want to start off this video, but I went on for 10 minutes because I feel like that's so important to cover. I mean, that alone should be enough for you to want to play this game. That's not even counting the fact that it's insanely fun. Like, this game is just so, so fun, all right? If you like the idea of capital ships flying around in space in a MOBA-style type of arena combat scenario where it's heavily team-oriented and it's about using certain classes of ships to kill each other and win and dominate the enemy's base and then destroy it, then yes, this is the game for you. I mean, this game is just so good. Like, I mean, when I first- I bought it on day one, all right? Like, I spent money on the initial release of the game. So, yes, I did receive boosters for it, and yes, I do get a Forerunner benefit, which earns me slightly more credits at the end of every game. It's, and that actually benefits my entire team as well. My team gets those benefits as well. Unless someone who spent more money back then into early access, who was initial founder of the game, basically, they have higher earnings every single game. So I do have that because I did buy it day one. And I knew from day one back then that when it released, it was going to be free to play. But I wanted to support the development because when I was looking into the game and I made videos back then, you can even go, if you want to see what the game looks like now and then compare it to back then, I have videos on my channel, two videos. One's an in-depth tutorial and one's the first initial impressions of this game. Go back and watch those videos if you want and you'll see just how much this game has actually come along, how much it has changed and for the better. Because it's just like, it's it's mind-boggling how much better this game has gotten. How balanced it is. How fun it is to play. It's just like, I can't get over that. I've been re I'm repeating myself, but that's kind of the important thing, right? You people play games for fun. But it's also a competitive game. This is a game that you're going to play and you will get mad at your teammates. And you will get mad at yourself. It happens. Every game that's competitive, it, it'll do that to you. Especially if you're a very competitive individual like me. You can get mad at times. It's going to happen. And because it's such a team-focused game, it's very imperative that you learn your ship's characteristics and how to best apply it. So, I mean, for me, back when I made my old, you know, Fractured Space video, I made an in-depth tutorial talking about all the capital ships that were in the game at the time. And back then, I demonstrated the Assassin, which is now called the Ghost in-game. But back then, it was called the Assassin. And it was a ship that can cloak, and then you would use this ability called Ambush that increases your damage output, and then you would just launch a volley of rockets on target, and you would just decimate the opposition. Back then, you can almost, like, take out any ship in one go. If you manage to sneak up behind somebody, and you shot them in the ass, like, with the Ambush ability, you can take them out in one strafing run, which was crazy. Not so much now, they've rebalanced that, it takes a lot more to take out a ship, so it actually makes the Assassin harder to play. Which is now, again, called the Ghost. And then, of course, now we have a Watchman, which back then was called the Sniper, which plays differently now. It's a lot more, it's more spongy, like it's less, uh, it's more fragile, actually, is what I mean to say. It's more of a fragile ship now, but it does a tremendous amount more damage, and it has a higher fire rate, and anyway. A lot has changed, the game is great. If this interests you at all in the slightest, you should absolutely download it and check it out. It's not a big download, it's a pretty small file, and if you like it enough that you are interested in the game long term and you're thinking, hey, if this was an actual retail game, I would buy it, then by all means, do it. There is an option in the DLC section. You can buy the game or you buy all the ships, all 31 ships for a flat rate, 40 bucks. You get everything in the game. And then all you have to do is earn credits to earn the side grades and the credits come easy. It's not hard to earn credits. You can just rack up those credits real quick. On average, you will earn at least at least 10,000 at the minimum per game and at the most 20,000 so going off of those numbers a few games not even a couple of games you'll be able to buy a side grade for your ship because most side grades are around 40,000 credits depending depending on the ship so I mean it's again if you if you want to buy everything in the game all the content all the ships I highly encourage you to do it because I want to see this type of business model for a free-to-play title flourish and become the standard of what is necessary. Because I am sick and tired of free-to-play games nickel and diming you every step of the way. Like a perfect example is Arc Age. I got it's a completely different game. It's an MMORPG. But I got into that game big time. I actually spent $150 to get the game. I bought it and the alpha. So that, that was so I can get access to the closed alpha that was going on. Now, I enjoyed my time in the closed alpha and the closed betas, and then of course the actual game. But about a month after the game came out, they started 
slowly changing the in-game store and nickel and diming us so that even me that spent $150 fell behind immensely compared to those who were spending money after the game was released. That just goes to show publisher greed, all the corporate dickwads that are sitting up in their offices, stroking their dicks, and wanting to, you know, pull out the, the wallets in, from your pocket and then just, you know, take all your money, will ruin a game. And seeing the developers here deliver something that is truly consumer friendly is just absolutely amazing. And this is now my new standard game. Like, this is a game that I will be playing for many, many weeks, probably months. I'm not entirely sure how long I'm going to be playing this game for, honestly, because I could get bored. But I've been playing it for long enough. I have about 22.5 hours in the game now. And when I initially played it back two years ago, I only put in five hours. So, you know, you can do the math on your own, figure out how much time that actually is. But basically, I've been just it's around 17 hours. <laughs> but basically, I've been playing this game and I've, I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. I love what they did with this game. I love how it feels to play. I love how the teamwork orientation. I love the idea of jumping from sector to sector. Like, it's just, it's got so much team dynamic. It's got so much of this, like, this, it feels like World of Tanks. If you guys are familiar with World of Tanks or War Thunder or, you know, World of Warships or any of those kind of games, it's basically that, but you have kind of a 3D maneuvering, like, you don't move just, like, laterally. You don't go straight backwards and turn right and left. You can actually, you know, climb vertically, climb, like, descend, ascend, strafe left and right, go forward and back. Like, there's more movement abilities, and your turrets work in the same fashion, you know, 360 degree arcs for most of the weapons. Some of the ships actually have weapons that are, like, that are so powerful that they cannot do 360 turns. They can't, they can only shoot in a very specific arc in front of them. There's actually a sniper ship called the Overseer, which the turrets don't even turn at all. You have to point that ship at the enemy and shoot a giant beam at them and maintain trajectory. In other words, if you get ambushed from the side, you're completely screwed. There's nothing you can do because you have to turn your ship and actually point the front of it at a target. And of course, you're weak. So, you know, and you don't have many defensive abilities. That main gun is all you really have. So, I mean, it's very interesting to see how these ships play out. And it's just, it's such a freaking great game. Guys, just go download it. I mean, it's free to play, right? It's free. You got to try it. You may not like it. It may not be your type of game. But if this at all, at all from what you've seen in this video intrigues you in the slightest, in the slightest, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to download it and try it out. It's gotten popular since it's been released. I hope it gets more and more popular. I want this game to be like the one of the number one free to play games on Steam. Like it has to be because this game is just so well made and consumer friendly, which is probably the most important aspect to me in my mind. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up, guys. I may make some more videos for this game. Not entirely sure, but right now, this is it. My name's been Pepperbelly. Thank you guys for joining me today on this video. And I will see you guys on the next one.